The gravitational force is one of the main forces we encounter in our physics problems. When we talked about free fall, we talked about how objects on Earth are accelerated toward the center of the Earth with a magnitude of g equals about 9.8 meters per second squared. Newton's second law tells us that net force equals mass times acceleration. So this acceleration that we attribute to the Earth's gravity must be caused by a force. That force is the gravitational force. It's this gravitational force that causes a mass to accelerate with the value of g, or 9.8 meters per second squared, toward the center of the Earth. The weight of an object on Earth is directly related to the gravitational force of Earth. In fact, the weight of an object on or above the Earth is the gravitational force that the Earth exerts on the object. So we can find the weight of an object on Earth by multiplying the object's mass by the gravitational acceleration value. Newton's law of universal gravitation says every particle in the universe exerts an attractive force on every other particle. For two particles that have masses m1 and m2 and are separated by a distance r, the force that each exerts on the other is directed along the line joining the particles and has a magnitude directly proportional to the product of the particle masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the masses. Let's try to make some sense out of this. Let's look at two particles that have masses m1 and m2 and are separated by a distance r. Each particle exerts a force on the other. That sounds like Newton's third law, forces in pairs. This force is directed along the line joining the particles. So the attractive force on mass 1 from mass 2 is directed this way, and the attractive force on mass 2 from mass 1 is directed this way. Each force has a magnitude that's directly proportional to the product of the particle masses. So the attractive force on mass 1 from mass 2, for example, is directly proportional to m1 times m2. The force is also inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the masses. So our force is inversely proportional to r squared. From these proportionalities, we can build our equation for universal gravitation. The gravitational force, which we will call f sub g, is equal to m1 times m2 divided by r squared, all multiplied by a constant, capital G, which is the universal gravitational constant. G has a value of 6.674 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons times square meters per square kilogram. Let's look at this equation a little more. If we had two planet Earths out in space with their centers 20,000 kilometers apart, they would be accelerated toward each other because they would feel a gravitational force between them. If we separated two cars by the same distance in space, they would also accelerate toward each other, but at a much lower rate. The distance between them is the same as the distance between the Earths, but their masses are so much smaller. If we started the cars much closer together in space, they would accelerate toward each other much faster. Since the distance term in this equation is squared, it has a greater effect on the gravitational force than the masses of the objects. Something to note when working problems involving the law of universal gravitation is that we usually treat the objects as point masses, which means we treat an object as if all its mass was at its center. This is why we draw the distance line to the centers of the two objects.